Today's uh, video, I'm just going to ramble on here for a while and um, talk about, um, try to answer some of the um, most asked questions, uh, share some advice, uh, give some encouragement, and uh, I'm going to start by saying that even though I've been making moccasins for over 37 years now, and have made hundreds of pairs for friends and family, I do not consider myself an expert. Uh, I make my mistakes even today. Uh, but the great things about mistakes is you learn from them. And the great thing about making mistakes while making a product or something useful like moccasins, you can always take them apart, fix the mistake, and put them back together. It's that simple. Um, also, I am not an instructor, per se. You can tell that I'm not used to making videos like so many people are. Um, I'm not very good as far as giving instructions. Uh, so, my feelings aren't going to be hurt if uh, you only use me as, you, as I am useful to you. If you find another website where you think they give better instructions or better details on moccasins, go for it. My goal here is to encourage you to enjoy a hobby that you make something with your own hands that can be used on a daily basis or gifted to friends and family, and you can be proud that you made it with your own hands. That is my goal here. Now, over the last six or seven years, I have been on and offline. So if you have written to me and asked me questions, and I did not get back to you, I apologize. It's probably because it was during that time period where I was offline for three to six months. Uh, but I'm back now. I am always willing to help out anybody who wants to give this hobby a try of making moccasins, uh, I would do the best I can to give you answers or give you or send you in the direction where you can find things. And uh, feel free to write to me with uh, any questions you may have. I'll do the best I can for you. One of the most asked questions is where can I find um, moccasin patterns or leather is another, is the second most asked question. The quickest answer is tandyleather.com. They're the biggest supplier of leather products and tools and everything you need to work with leather uh, in the country. And they're based out of Texas. Now, I have nothing against Tandy itself. It's, it's the great company. You can get everything you need here. But they can be a little pricey. So later on in the video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can keep costs down. But, as you can see, they have just virtually everything that you want. Down here, if you go to Leather Patents, is moccasin boots right here. Uh, another set of patterns for uh, ankle highs and low cuts. Uh, then there's another one for the old um, the mountain men type moccasins. Uh, so that's a good place to get started. You'll also find, if you go back to the home page, you'll also find all the tools that you need. Uh, there's a punch right here, the lacing that you need to lace up your moccasins. Uh, they also sell, um, let's see, leather projects. Uh, they have the books. Uh, this hand sewing I would recommend. Uh, it shows you how all the different stitches that can be done. Uh, they sell awls, uh, sewing needles. Uh, here's the punch again. Uh, they also in leather. Let's see if we can 
find the lever. Placing and stitching. Here's the imitation Sanu that you could use. It comes in different colors. You can get it in different style, styles. Uh, blunt needles. Uh, here's the lacing. Now you see this type of lacing here? I'm going to tell you from experience. If you're going to use that to just lace together, sew together your moccasins, that's fine. But the part that goes around the ankle and comes to the front needs to be tied. This isn't strong enough for that. The first time you go to pull them tight, this is going to snap. So for that, you're going to have to make your own lacing out of the leather that you're working with. Um, kits. For... You Cub Scout leaders, uh, I've had a few people ask me about uh, at what age would be appropriate for kids to take on a project like moccasin making. Uh, if you're dealing with younger kids, I personally don't see a reason why, and I guess I'm going to have to do a search on their site here. I can't see why uh, kids from, say, 9 up to, uh, say, 12 or 13 can't make uh, a pair of moccasins like these. It's, uh, everything is all pre-cut. Um, the foam cushion is already glued in place. The holes are all pre-punched, and all the kids have to do is lace them up. Now, and, and that in itself will teach them some basic skills about working with leather. They'll see for themselves how the holes are punched or need to be punched. And so if they get to the point oh, when they get older and they want to do something with um, making their own padding or, get, or making a different pair, uh, at least some of the basic skills can be picked up from here. Dandy leather also carries a wide variety of leather that you could use for, your, for making your moccasins. Uh, there are some here, well, there was at one time, but there used to be uh, ones they called moccasin leather. And it was the thickness it was a split leather, but it was a, a good thickness for making moccasins to be worn outside. They weren't real thick and heavy, but yet they weren't super thin as, as like a suede jacket. Uh, so they have a wide variety. Now, you can see when I, when I talk about things being a little pricey, you can see where a hide like this is $50. Um, that seems like a lot of money, but out of that one hide, you can get three or four pairs of moccasins, at least the low cuts. Uh, you might only get two pairs of boots out of them, but the low cuts, you can get three or four pairs of moccasins out of, out of that one hide. So, if you think of it that way, that brings the cost down some. But they have a, uh, wide variety. Um. They even get into tool leather, the thick old stuff that uh, you would use for making belts. Uh, garment leather. Uh, again, a lot of this is thinner stuff that's good for jackets and pants and shirts and things of that nature. <coughs> they have it in the suede, the smooth. Um, they have a wide variety of, of Leathers.
and he also has a fine selection of uh, books that would be helpful in any crafting that you do. Uh, lacing a little leather would be handy if you were uh, getting into moccasin making. Um, uh, there's another one here, Sewing with Leather book, and The Art of Hand Sewing Leather. Uh, I have that, and I've, and I've used it quite a bit. Uh, it, it's very handy with coming up with new ideas when you want a new project. But uh, anything you need for the basics to get started with, uh, Tandy Leather, you can find it on Tandy Leather. It still surprises me how many people write and ask, where can I find a moccasin pattern? Um, I started out with Googling, and you'd be surprised what you can come up with. <coughs> Today I've shared some of the websites that I've found over the years, but uh, by Googling moccasin pattern, you can even come up with a website like this, where they show you how to make traditional moccasins, um, and how to make the patterns. Now, obviously, when you print them out, the, the patterns aren't going to be to the size of your feet. But the information is here on how to take all the measurements and how to create your own pattern. Now, I'm going to show you this pair right here is a traditional Lakota Sioux moccasin, a low cut. And the reason why I'm bringing this one to your attention is because later on when I show you my moccasin boots that I made, my Lakota lo uh, moccasin boots I made, you'll see how after you learn the simple basics of making this, you can add the leather necessary to turn it into a boot and move on to the next more complicated parts of making boots. Uh, So, do some research. Don't be afraid to do some research. Uh, you know, this is an interesting pair right here of uh, Kiowa boots. Uh, they're only an ankle high, and you see the fringe here? And again, it's only a two-piece, two pieces of leather that you need to cut out. Um, but this fringe here was, uh, the purpose behind it was for it to drag behind your, uh, their feet, and, uh, kind of cover up the trail, hide the fact that they had been there. So, I used to make a number of those. Uh, but, again, you know, uh, in doing, even going looking for this page, I found a website that sold a DVD on how to make moccasins. Uh, so all that information is out there, it's on the web. All you got to do is look for it, do your homework. Now, if this is going to be your first time uh, working with a leather project, I would strongly recommend that your first pair be a low cut, uh, something simple, like these Eastern Woodland center seams. I showed you where online you can find the information on how to make your own pattern and what you need to, to make up a pair of these. Uh, they're relatively simple. They may look difficult, but pay close attention to your measurements, what they tell you, where to take your measurements and whatnot, and lay it all out on a piece of paper. Uh, the great thing about making your own, what you put together, you can take apart and do again. So, if they get a little baggy in one area and need to have some leather trimmed off, you can take the stitching out, cut where you need to, uh, punch more holes, and put them back together again until they fit. That's the great thing about working on a project of your own. Uh, again, these you may want to buy a patent for. Uh, I don't know if there is one online. Uh, I think I have seen one, but these are simple to make. 
there's only three pieces to them, the lower sole, the uh, vamp over the toe, and the collar that goes around the top edge. Very simple to make, doesn't take a genius to do it, and again, what you make, if you make any mistakes, you can take apart, fix it, put it back together, and you'll be very proud of your accomplishment. Once you get the basic skills down, once you get the basic skills down, then you can move on to something a little bit more complicated, like these traditional shoe markers and boots. Now as you look at these, you can see the lower half is just like I had shown, showed you in the um, previous website. And then this is just a large rectangular shape of leather that makes up the top. They get sewn to the side, off center, so that it can wrap around your legs. And that's what makes turns it into a boot. It's that simple. And once you get the basics down, then let the creative juices flow. Because from there on, you can do all sorts of things. You can mix and match colors. Um, you can start toying around with doing bead work. And again, nothing is more satisfying than when you get done. And you've made something that you can use on a daily basis or gift to a friend or a relative that can be used on a daily basis. It's a great feeling. Now, after years of learning the skills, these boots here, uh, an online person contacted me and asked me to make them some boots. Um, at the time, I was feeling a little soft. It was a woman, and, and I was feeling a little soft in the heart. So I made these boots for her. Um, I never made a pattern. I just utilized what I had and created everything I needed. All she did was send me a picture from a website of the type of boots that she wanted and her foot size. And then I created all these on my own. So again, once you get the basics down, and understand how you can work with leather. The world is your oyster. You can create and do anything you want. Uh, you see I mixed black leather. It was buffalo hide. So it's good and thick and will last her years upon years. Uh, I mix that with the cowhide suede. Uh, so she has a double sole in there. This vamp I had to make the pattern myself for this vamp, as well as to figure out how to incorporate it into the leg piece that went up. And these actually are pulled from the back, and the lacing is, these are kind of a slide on, and the lacings uh, slide up the back, and wrap around and, and tie in the front after they pulled tight. Uh, it was a cool bro project. And uh, I was very pleased with the way they came out. And she was very happy with them as well. So, again, once you get the basics down, you're all set to do all sorts of things. Before I move on to the uh, next subject, uh, I just wanted to show you the back side of those boots. How the stitching goes up the back. And uh, the leather crosses around. Um, so, and then it all ties up. And again, the lacing I made myself. I happen to have, I happen to have found a, a lace maker, uh, which I don't think Tandy sells or not. I'll have to check into that. But you can make your own lace simply by cutting out a circle and slowly cutting all the way around it. And with my lace maker, uh, I cut a piece of uh, leather about the size of um, uh, a nine inch plate, and I can have 30 feet of lacing made up in, in no time. Um, 
So, again, if you're going to end up pulling it tight, make your own lace. If you're just stitching with it, then the cheap lacing, like I showed you earlier, uh, will do you fine. So, we're going to move on to the next subject. Alright, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about beading, because I've had some people ask about it. I, myself, am not a beater. I don't have the patience for it. The pair that you see here uh, is my first attempt, my first serious attempt. I've, I've made a few other attempts and given up. And a lot of people have complimented me on these, but I'll tell you right now, any real Native American grandmother would be beating me aside the head and telling me how lousy these came out. And she'd be absolutely right. But it is a good example of how you can decorate a pair of moccasins with some beadwork. Now, on this particular pair, uh, this brown section here, uh, that's a separate vamp that I made up all by itself. And I stitched the beads to that. Then, as you can see, I sold that to the top of the moccasin. Uh, then um, this ribbon along here, uh, I found some ribbon at Walmart that I thought was kind of neat looking. Uh, so again, I cut it and I stitched it all the way around. And then the same thing with the beads going along here. I just punched the little holes using an awl and stitched them all the way around. Now on this pair I kept things a little bit more simple. Uh, you can see where right here uh, it's called hair bone beads. They come in different lengths. Uh, most of them are all hollow so to send needle and thread through is not a big deal. Uh, and I put beads on either end and then just punched a hole into the um, leather and stitched them on. Is all I did to help decorate these moccasins. <coughs> now, as you become, um, after you get your basic skills down, not only can you decorate things better, but you'll find that there's other ways you can improve your moccasins or add things to them. For example, these are, well, what most people commonly know as the Inca boot that's sold by Minnetonka or a few other uh, manufacturers. Um, they're an ankle high. They come around, they tie in the front. Uh, they are actually a traditional Cherokee moccasin. Uh, this section here, where the cursor is running, I didn't fringe it, as you would find in the boots, in the moccasin boots you buy today. Uh, because traditionally, the um, Cherokees didn't fringe theirs. They left that cuff just like that. But what I added was, I stitched another piece to the tongue and fringed it to add a little, make a little change in it, dress it up a little bit more. And then I added the beadwork as well. I went with two-tone, uh, a darker brown for the sole, and the uh, sand-colored uh, topaz leather for the top. <coughs> the other thing, another hint that I'll give you this is a double sole. In between uh, the two soles, the inner sole and the outer sole, is padding. Now, I go to a rug store and I ask them for scraps of the padding, the cushioning pattern they use underneath rugs. Uh, I have found that that not only holds up very well, uh, but it doesn't crush either. It, it's kind of like memory foam. It bounces back up into place. 
uh, and you can get that in various thicknesses, but most of the time it's only about a quarter inch thick. And most of the time, out of the remittances, out of the scrap piles, they'll give it to you for nothing. Um, I went to a rug store about five years ago, and I still haven't run out of what they gave me. Um, and to add the double sole, it's a simple matter of adding a quarter inch, cut, cutting, shaping the sole, but adding a quarter inch all the way around, so when it folds over the pattern, the uh, cushioning, um, it all comes together nice and neat and trim. And if you do that, you're going to find a pair of moccasins that are like walking on pebbles. You'll, you'll never feel a stone or a pebble under your feet. You can walk through the roughest of the woods and you won't feel a thing because they're going to be so soft. And even if you only wear them around the house, they're going to be so soft. It's unbelievable. So, again, after you get the basics down, you can be as creative as you want. Mix and match colors, uh, whatever. And uh, then you can take those skills and move on to other things. A couple more things on being creative. Um, just because you have a patent doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay with that pattern. Uh, you can do things to change it. For example, the vamp here at the top. You can make it longer if you want it to come up higher on your foot. Or you can cut it straight across here if you want it to be shorter, down lower on your foot. Uh, some patterns may give you uh, this collar that goes around, depending on the size it may be one and a half inch this way and 14 inches around or, or length however it may be but that's not to say that if you want longer fringe add a little bit more width to it before you cut the leather uh, and then you'll have longer fringe or if you don't want any fringe at all shorten it and cut it right here again you're free to do anything you want and create what you want. And if it doesn't work out, what you put together, you can take apart and do again. It's that simple. So you can be really creative. As creative as you want. Now, let's talk about cost. This can be, you can dump Tons of money into this if you want, if you have it. If you don't, there's lots of ways of keeping the cost down. For example, you don't have to go out and buy a punch, a leather punch from Tangi Leather. The first pair of moccasins I made, I bought the pattern and I used a hammer and nail to punch to the leather. Uh, so you could do the same thing. Uh, the leather itself, I didn't have the money to go back to the Tandy store and buy leather. Uh, but my girlfriend and I at the time used to go to a lot of yard sales. And for $5, I picked up an old leather jacket, men's leather jacket with fringe and everything on it, and took it apart, and that's what I used to make my first pair of moccasin boots. And uh, they're... They didn't hold up because it was the th thin garment suede, but still, they came out great, uh, and it cost me next to nothing. <coughs> now, again, I already had accumulated the tools by the time I got to the point where I was making them, and a friend of mine was selling them for me at powwows. And I found a great leather supplier over in... Uh, Lewiston, Maine, um, where I could get my leather at, some of it was as low as a dollar and a quarter a square foot. Uh, the deer skin, I think at that time, was going for like two twenty-five a square foot. Uh, so
so, but they also had, on average, their regular stock leather went for, I think, a dollar seventy-five to two dollars a square foot. Anyway, it was cheap. It was cheap compared to what you have to pay for nowadays. And I used to go in and buy it, you know, at three, four hundred dollars in a whack. So I'd come home with a lot of, a lot of leather. So when I made the traditional low cut like this, I made a Cherokee moccasins and I made a Kiowa duster. And material-wise, on average, it was only about $7 a pair. One good size hide can get you two to three pairs of moccasins, depending on the style that you're making. Uh, obviously, you're not going to get three pairs of boots out of one hide, because that takes so much. But uh, you can get, say, three pairs of this style of moccasins. So, um, becoming aware of what is available to you in your own community can also help keep the cost down. Most hardware stores sell leather punches even still today. Uh, you can find sewing needles, uh, the blunt ones for just stitching, or... Um, the type that you would use for punching through leather. Uh, glove uh, needles is what they're called. You can find those at Walmart, craft stores. Um, depending on the hardware store that you deal with, they may have them. Uh, and you can find them relatively cheap. Leather, hey, if you do a lot of yard sailing or estate sales, uh, sometimes you can get lucky and find some leather. You'd be surprised what Grandpa may have hiding up in the attic or out in the barn. He may have some good leather that uh, he's had around for a long time. I had a cousin that had some leather for, uh, I don't know, 20 years or so. And uh, he finally realized he wasn't going to do anything with it, so he gave it to me. And I made three pairs of moccasins out of them out of what he gave me. So, that's another way. Just kind of keep rooting around, looking around, and uh, try to find ways of saving money. Uh, there are some things, like the imitation sanu. you know, it's, unless you're a hunter, and are into learning how to tan your own hide, and how to turn the muscle into sanu, um, there are some things you just you're going to have to buy. Imitation Sanu is one of them. But, and that can be found at Walmart in small spools, enough to do, say, five, six, seven pairs of moccasins um, to save your cost down. Um, again, you can buy, if you want to do the stitching with uh, leather lacing instead of Imitation Sanu, um, you can buy uh, you can buy that still I think at Walmart or you can get it online at reasonable prices uh, but again when it comes to this part up here that needs to be tied and you pull tight make that out of the leather that you're working with because that uh, other stuff is cheap and the first time you pull that bolt tight it's gonna break I'll guarantee it and you'll get frustrated the stitching you see here is all imitation sinew. Now, when you're working with that, you see at the end, right here where I'm circling that little piece sticking out? That's the end of it, and it gets tied off there. Take uh, a match or a Bic lighter and light that. Burn it a little bit and then put it right out. That's going to keep that from coming undone. Imitation Sanu is made with um, wax on it, beeswax. And uh, you'll find that uh, if you don't burn it, it's, it's going to undo. And stop uh, undoing, uh, start coming apart on you. So whenever you get to the end, always burn that a little bit to keep it from coming apart. 
So those are some ways that you can um, keep the cost down by being creative and being aware of what's available to you in your own community uh, and some ideas on, and uh, some hints about what you need to do when you're done, like burn the sinew and So let's move on. Uh, this is a supplemental uh, added hint about making your moccasins. Uh, over the years, I've gotten into the habit of, like, on these eastern woodlands, I do the front part first. Uh, because that way you can slide your foot in, and if the back needs to be trimmed to get a snug fit, it makes it easier to do that. Uh, you'll get a better fit that way if you always do the toe section first. Like even on these, I sew the vamp on first, then I slide my foot in, pull up the back heel, uh, and put it in place and see if it needs to be trimmed to get a tight fit. Uh, the other thing you want to be cautious with is you want to keep you want to keep your punch holes as close to the edge on the part that's going to be on the inside. And because you don't want too much leather hanging out, you'll find that it's going to um, uh, chafe the back of your foot or rub against your skin in a in a uh, hard way. Uh, the other thing you might want to be aware of is um, after you stitch this all together, especially if you use, it's easier with sinew than it is with lacing. With lacing, you're going to find that in parts of the big toe, it's gonna, the lacing's going to rub against that. Uh, so one trick that I've learned is to take a piece of wood that will fit inside that's, that's close to the same size of your foot. And then take a hammer and hammer all the way around to help flatten everything all out so it's nice and smooth and that should eliminate any of the, the toe problems. Um, but I think that's that's a supplement to this uh, to this uh, making of the moccasins. Uh, if I think of anything else I'll add it. Well, I hope this video has uh, been helpful to you. I hope it uh, encouraged you to uh, make an attempt and realize that making moccasins are not that hard. Um, I hope it's made it easier for you to find the patents and to make the patents uh, and to realize that the basic skills that you can uh, accumulate by making your own moccasins, which is one of the easiest of all the leather crafts can be transferred into making leather pants or shirts or uh, whatever else to dress, whatever else you'd want. So, and to how to decorate them. So, Native American moccasins are not slippers. Uh, Native Americans didn't run through the woods in slippers. They wore moccasins. Moccasins can be worn anywhere's every day. Thank you for watching.